get refreshed when we come together, don't we? You know, sometimes during the week we have so much activity that hits our minds. Anybody understand that activity that tries to interfere with peace? Amen. Racing thoughts and, and, and commotion and negative. Ooh, anybody ever deal with negative thoughts? Mm. But you know, we don't have to. We don't have to uh, stay there. Amen. We have a seal around us, the Holy Spirit, and it's like a windshield. You know, if I drove down the freeway without a windshield, we all went to the beach. We'd end up there, but we'd have bugs all in our eyes and teeth. And well, who knows if we didn't have a windshield, maybe a bird or two would have joined us. Who knows? Right. But, <laughs> but the thing about God's kingdom the thing about God's kingdom, he, he talked to me about this. He said, you know, my kingdom is righteousness. That's just doing what's right according to God, right? Peace. Wow. That's the exemption from chaos. And joy. Now, we can choose to live there or we can give in to the other side <laughs> at any given minute. Any given minute, you know, flare up, it's called. Anybody have a flare up this week and had to put it down? Amen. Because the Holy Spirit gives us self-control where we control ourselves. And this week I was thinking, you know, the one thing I'm going to work on in my life is to cut off the negative snake. Anybody ever deal with a negative snake? A negative snake. You know, that negative snake doesn't want you to like anything, like anybody enjoy anything about life, never see the blue in the sky, never see how beautiful you are. You're beautiful. Anybody ever told Jenny, isn't she beautiful? So, I, you know, this week, I, my goal, one of my goals was to cut off the negative snake. God said, Ann, that's a snake. You know, sometimes we don't think about it, you know. We just assume that our thoughts are just, you know, just out there, and that's part of us. And no, it's not. We have to cast them down. We have to cast them down. That's right. You have to take it and cast it down. And not every dream you have is of God. But you know, the only way we're going to know that is by knowing God ourself through the study of His Word. And you'll always hear me say this. This is the principal thing is the Bible. Amen? The, the number one thing in your life through your journey, is you keep that Bible, and you you go into it daily, because Christ is there on a daily basis in the spirit realm. If you could see him, he's right there with you. Yes, 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 because if, if we don't allow the Lord to feed us, the negative snake will. The snake is negative because he's bitter that he lost. And he sees you going for it. He sees the angels around you. He sees the Lord around you. Amen. But he does come to God's people. He came to Eve, didn't he? And he said, did God really say? And he put things out to her. Well, if you, if you took this, the sin, you could be wiser. You could have more. You'd be better off. And he convinced her. And she bit it to her own sorrow. And then she hands it to hubby. Amen. <laughs> and marriage is that you're supposed to keep each other on the path. Try. Amen. But, but the one thing we do need to get rid of is the negative snake. And when we have a negative thought, it's like, sometimes it's a flare up even. You, you feel like you're going to burst or flare up. You know, when things get so bad, sometimes it's like a pressure cooker. <laughs> My mom had one of those growing up. And I would sit there and watch her in this little <laughs> kitchen. It was like, I, I wasn't a part of the food prep, but I got the cleaning prep every night. I was a good cleaner, though, you know? But, but the kitchen was just too small for more than one. And I would sit there and watch her cook. And boy, sometimes she would flare up like that uh, pressure cooker. If that lid come off, I mean, that stuff goes everywhere. But she would get it to that point before she's born again and understood how to operate. It's all a learning curve. It's all a learning curve, you know. Some people are this big in the Lord, and some people are this big. Some people are this big. Some people are this big. The bigger you are, 
the more you should be concerned about the others and stay humble. So does it, do you know what I'm saying? Because that's all it is, is love. It's a kingdom of love. It's a kingdom of respect. We're to respect one another. We're to respect ourselves. You know, when the devil comes around and negative, negative, telling you that, you know, you're not good enough. You're not good enough. And, and have you noticed when we're in the mirror, ladies, that we hear things? It's the negative snake. You're a masterpiece. This isn't some Hallmark card. This is reality. So what the Bible says. And so we are to love ourselves enough to read the Bible daily and to know Christ for ourselves. Amen. We're, we're to love ourselves and not give place to the negative snake. You know, Ephesians 4.27 says, give the devil no place. But we give him a lot of place. But what do we do when that negative, negative, is everybody baptized in the Holy Spirit here? Everybody speak in tongues? Well, you know, the thing is, is there's, Paul said, we speak in tongues to build up ourselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if somebody hears you that isn't uh, a believer, it's a sign to them. But when we pray in the Spirit, it's to build up ourselves because Christ is praying through you the perfect prayer, although he's standing there praying for you anyway. But it does cut off negative. Because if you're talking, you can't hear at the same time, generally. You're focused on one thing or the other. And so when that negative snake comes, and it lifts you into a different realm. It takes you from the circumstances that all around you, all around you, there's the negative. But we're sealed in God. We have the power because your circumstances, maybe your finances are bad, your health is bad now, your relationships, whatever, okay? They could all be blown off at once. But you are supposed to have righteousness, Peace and joy. That's ours. That was purchased for us from the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. And so we are to love ourselves. You know? It, it, and it's like, why? What's all this? Where is this coming from? God's like, it's the negative snake. All these things. And how we sum each other up. I mean, it, it doesn't matter because we're a kingdom of love. No matter how much you know or don't know, it doesn't matter. Just keep knowing, amen? And let's enjoy ourselves, enjoy, enjoy each other. Want to? Instead of fight all the way through life? You know what I'm saying? It's like, well, things aren't perfect, Jen. I'm going to wait till they're perfect. It's like, you're never going to get there, sweetheart. This isn't heaven. This isn't heaven. I'm going to wait till you're a perfect friend because before I forgive you, I'm going to wait till you're a perfect friend. You know, mother, until you treat me right, it's like we're to love no matter what. Amen. Amen. Let it go and let the devil go on with his negativity. Father God, we just thank you that he has to take a hike out of here tonight. Yeah. And Father, as he goes, as he goes, give him triple for what he's done to us. Amen. Come to take anxiety with him. And, and take anxiety <laughs> with you. Because that's not a God. No, <laughs> because see, that number two is peace. Yeah. What's the opposite of peace? It's chaos. It's chaos. It's like, let's just take a deep breath and blow it out. The presence of God is energizing. It's refreshing. He's the Prince of Peace. He's, he's, he is not the God of chaos and driving. He is God. And in His presence... Uh-oh, here's number three, is fullness of joy. And so when we come together, when we come together, just, just chill out. Put your shoulders down. We're not here to impress anybody. You don't have to impress me. I love each and every one of you. I pray for everyone that comes through here every day. And I go to love you guys as I pray for you. And I enjoy your presence. And we should enjoy each other and enjoy breaking open the bread of life. Yeah, thank you. 
I enjoy being here. <laughs> but you know, and, and we should respect ourselves. Do we respect ourselves? Do we hold our head up high? Do we put good food in our body? Are we, we're, are we the trash can and we just stuff it full of anything that we can, can open a can and throw it down? You know what I mean? Do, maybe we should take a little bit more time and get some fresh spinach. But you know, we have kids and we understand. And you know something, I think God made McDonald's, you know. Nobody, nobody sent me an email over it, but, but you know, there's time for everything, amen? Okay? So I, I, I believe that the kids will live. I mean, you know, these kids over in Africa, they, they're, they're digging through dirt trying to find something edible. And those kids grow up to be healthy. Well, how can that be? God. God. <laughs> so why don't we just kind of let, let these knots go tonight? Amen? And just enjoy each other. And we need to learn to respect each other. Respect each other. It's real simple, you know. Uh, respect yourself. Respect yourself. I respect myself today. I'm going to respect myself. I'm going to love myself. I'm going to get into the Word and take good care of myself. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to work out. If it's just, you know, running around the block. If you don't have tennis shoes, well, you'll be fine. Put on a thick pair of socks. <laughs> Okay? You don't have to look like the guy that's all set up in the Nike gym and he's Mr. Olympia. I mean, that's him. If you want to go for it, go for it, hon. We'll respect. I love you. I respect you. But this is who I am. I may not work out two hours like you. I may want to swim for, for 10 laps and get out of the pool. Okay? But you know what I'm saying? I mean, life is too short. Life is too I short. too that negativity attracts. Yes. And that if you have to start speaking positive, anytime a negative thought comes to mind, you have to like replace it with something positive. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And and the thing about it is is when I, you know, when you pray in uh, their spirit language, one time I was praying for uh, in a meeting a gentleman from Sri Lanka. And I was praying over him and had my hands. I was praying, praying, praying. And he started weeping. And I thought, oh, no. You, know, you, you don't usually pray over people to have them begin to weep. It's the presence. Yeah, but it was the presence of God. But he said, you're speaking in my language. Oh. I said, wow. Mm -hmm. and, and I said, what, what did I say? He said, well, I kept praying and asking God. And he said, you keep saying over and over, it is finished, son. Do not worry about it. It is finished. Mm -hmm. And it was, in his, it was in his language. Mm. And that's what's so cool. God is supernatural. Amen. And, you know, sometimes we forget that when our car engine breaks. Or, you know, when I, I pulled in to uh, get my oil, ch oil changed, and I didn't expect him to come around the corner with a big list. Mm. He said, would you like your free analysis? And I'm thinking, I don't know. <laughs> Do, I? Do I want my free analysis? He said, well, you need this, you need that, you need this. And I said, Okay, I said, uh, just ring me up for the oil change right now, and I'll pray about the rest. Mm -hmm. Amen. But, uh, and so, what does God say in 1 Peter 5, 7? Anybody know that one? Yes, I do. Um, casting down the humble, like, uh, he'll exalt you in due time. No, the lion one? No, it's 1 Peter 5, 7. It Isn't talks it? about casting your casting care. Oh, oh, casting your care. care. So we're going to either let the negative snake tell us that things will get worse and, oh, oh, now, you know, oh, you know, <laughs> now you're really going to be cooked with that news. And we can listen to the negative snake or we can say, you know what? God has stated he will meet all my needs. According to glory. Not according to what I got. Right. I may not have anything, mm -hmm. but according to what he has. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And so. We're on this big ball called the earth for X amount of years, and we spend so much of our time listening to the negative snake, not loving or respecting ourselves, definitely not living in righteousness, peace, or joy. And we actually, I think that that should be a, a, a class assignment that we work on that this week. I can give you a tip is, is turn the TV off. Oh, I. The TV is so negative. The news. I don't yes. listen to it anymore. I got rid of cable when I became a Christian. Seriously. 
Yeah. Got rid of cable, got rid of the news. I just quit watching it. It was too negative. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, amen. But but even if we don't watch TV like that, we're still going to have thoughts that that mm-hmm. Satan tries to to come in and take away our joy. He's a he's a thief. Mm-hmm. He yeah, comes to so steal, kill, yeah. right? So, the Lord, thank you, Lord, for that. That was a that was a precious word. But the headline news this week, I always bring out something in the news and discuss that a little bit. Uh, there's eleven thousand dead. In counting, not to be negative, but there's always a point for head, my my portion of headline news. Amen. <laughs> well, these people are Muslims. This is a, a Muslim nation, mm-hmm. and I just, uh, you know, the book of Revelation chapter ten is is dedicated to an angel that is speaking to the humans about eat the book, make the Bible your first priority. Revelation chapter ten. He says, when you do eat the book, it will be two things. It will be bitter, and it will be sweet. When I saw this in the news, I sat there, and I, I was very quiet for a couple hours, <coughs> thinking where they were as I, you know, as somebody that has eyewitnessed uh, the hell. And the sorrow of Christ, mm-hmm. and and I'm thinking they're Muslim nations, and I'm thinking about our missionaries that go over there, and they they got this material, and I'm just praying for them. And I watched as all these buildings collapsed before my eyes. I was in shock, and uh, you know God often, He often sends uh, a hurricane, in different weather conditions, in judgment. God brings judgment on sin, okay? And he does that. He, he brings a wake-up call called judgment. And he does that because of his love. He brings the wake-up for love and to hopefully lead them to the truth so that they'll be, what, saved. Because <clears throat> when I came out of heaven and hell, I realized there is so much more to this life. And, and, and the things that I was focused on, just as a normal person, weren't the right things, okay? Startling to be um, seared, almost how you would sear a cow. You know how they sear the cow with that hot branding mm-hmm. iron? And, and, and that cow is forever changed. You can't take that branding out of the cow. That's how I was. And I, when they put me back here, I was startled, processing. And every time something like this happens, I have to process it. But in Isaiah 29, 6, it reads, Thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder and with earthquake. And that was an earthquake and great noise with storm and tempt us, and the flame of devouring fire. I just did a Bible study on weather and in detail and how God uses it in judgment to bring people to himself. I thought, this is horrible. But the Lord said, you know, a lot of my people will rush in to help them, to to take the rubble out, to rebuild their life, give them provision. He said, but if their foundation isn't solid, right? Because we know their homes collapsed. Their homes collapsed, but their foundation should be Christ. He said, if my people go in there and and they build, they want to build the house, right? They want to help rebuild their life. But if they don't have their foundation, he said, no matter how well, this is, one day they're going to leave the planet. 107 people per minute leave. 107 people, and here comes Jasmine. Hey, girl. 107 people per minute leave. The stats are one out of a 1,000 goes to heaven. Why, God? 
Hosea 4, 6. My people, my creation, are destroyed for lack of knowledge. If this isn't the foundation and they don't get in the Bible, and then we, we do have an educational program because teaching is an office. Amen? But if their foundation, if we rush over to Turkey, if we all got on a plane tonight, I said, come on, I got a plane. We're all going to go. You know, I'll pay, you know, for you guys for one month, take off work. I'll cover your salaries. Your kids can come. We'll go on my plane. We're going to go over there and help them. And we didn't give them the truth that without Jesus Christ washing away your sins, you will pay for them in eternal fire. Then we haven't done our job. Do you see? It's sombering, but we can just take a minute now to pray. Father, we just thank you for those people that are in Turkey and Syria and all through the world where they felt the tremors from one side of the world to the other. And Father, we just ask you to bring them the truth as you have for us, because we know that salvation is a gift and no one can have it unless you lead them to repentance, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. So that's part of who we are as Christians when we operate in love and respect for others. We want them to have everything that pertains to life and everything that pertains to godliness. Amen? But a lot of people run around the world, and, and all they attend to is their flesh. They have big cars, big diamonds, big names, big Grammys, big whatever. But their foundation, they have no foundation. So, but tonight's message is called the price tag. In the book of Mark, beginning in verse 10, um, or no, Mark chapter 10, excuse me, beginning in verse 35, Mark 10, beginning in verse 35, it reads, And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came unto him, Jesus, saying, Master, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire. So we have James and John coming to Jesus saying, we have a desire and we want you to fulfill it for us, Lord. And verse 36, and he, Jesus, said unto them, what would you that I should do for you? They said unto him, grant unto us that we may sit one at thy right hand and the other on thy left in thy glory. <laughs> so we, we consider dominion and rulership to be at the top is somebody that sits and is served. Okay? Well, that's not the character of Christ, is it? We become servants. The more a, a person grows, the more a person grows, the more they'll serve. Isn't that amazing? And Jesus talked about the Pharisees. They, they ran around in the best clothing, and they had all these bells and whistles. But they were dead men walking. And he was so upset because his whole earth was being negated. They were all poor, and, and they were spiritually deprived because these religious leaders, they took all their money, and they gave nothing to the people but rules and laws, and they didn't lift a finger to help them. Christ has a problem with that. But here comes two of his guys, and they're, they're wanting to, to sit. To sit means they don't do anything. They're waited on, right? To sit in the glory. Sound familiar with our generation of what they think a leader is? Just think about it. The greatest among you, the greatest among you, the one that's growing and maturing, will be the servant of all. <laughs> Amen? 
that it's not a pompous, prideful situation. It's a very humble situation. And, and, and serving people is different than sitting and being served. He said, who do you think is greater, the one serving or the one being served? But we grow to know things, amen. We weren't born knowing anything, were we? Except the need for mama to give us everything, amen. In verse 38, but Jesus said unto them, now he's talking to James and John, you know not what you ask. Can you drink of the cup that I drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with, which is the death, the life burial, and then eventually the resurrection of your existence? That's the cup. You know, I picture Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he was running around going, anybody going to pray? Are you, aren't you going to pray, Peter? Or Peter, wake up! John, wake up! Somebody, wake up, Matthew! You know, he was a garden, running around the garden. I call him the garden runner, you know? He was like, he was, to, he was going forward to be crushed. But you know, it's not until we're crushed that we have the anointing. A grape cannot be drank until it's crushed. <laughs> but he's running around. He's going to his crushing. Because, you know, what else are you going to do? And he says, whatever. And there's drops of blood coming out of him. And he got on his knees and he said, Father, if there's any other way, take this cup from me. Take this cup from me but not my will. This is where the tango is. But not my will. But yours be done. This is where we have this problem with the Lord. The will. But do you know that your will is a part of your soul? Your mind? What goes on in here? We get rid of the negative snake, amen? <laughs> and our will? Not my will, but yours be done. But see, that comes with us saying, okay, Lord, I'm here to grow, right? I'm here to grow so that I can, what, serve. <sighs> well, what do you mean, serve, Lord? Well, I want you to know me before I place you, okay? I might make you a governor. I may make you a senator. I may get you involved in the city council and get up there and contend for me. I might put you in media to, to bring forth the news and bring a spin in about what I'm doing. Example, weather. You know, we had a tornado over here. What's God doing? Amen? The earth doesn't operate on its own any more than we breathe on our own. God has blown in us the breath of life. He, t he formed Adam out of the ground, and he was made out of dirt. And he said, you will return to it. His spirit took off, you know. But uh, we, we're, we're not, weather just doesn't happen. Why is the weather? So you might be called a media. You might be called, you might be called to work in the church. You might be called to education. I've been praying for you a lot. To, to insight into what God has for you and for you to get clear about that because there's a lot in you. But uh, I just sense the Mary and Martha thing with you. You know, that closeness with Christ. Isn't that precious? So that's what I see right now in you is that the Mary and Martha thing and, and the closeness and that union and that walking. When you know Christ, you do anything for him. He's the most beautiful being when I saw him. And he stepped into my filthy place. <sighs> and he wrote on the wall, Jesus loves Annie. I was like, who's running the world? He just looked at me. It'll be okay. And he began to unpackage truth. 
And when you know truth, yeah, but it'll make you a servant. But there's a cup. There's a price tag. There's some a price tag. You know, when you go to the store, you have to give up something in exchange for another, don't you? There's a cost. It's called the price tag. Well, in verse 39, we see James and John responding to Christ. And they said unto him, we can. We can drink of it. Hey, it's all good. Amen. I understand him. I used to, you know. But boy, to the years, the death. And Jesus said unto them, you shall indeed drink of the cup. Your death, your burial, and your resurrection. That's a hard place. Amen. That's the refining. It's the wilderness. It's the potter's wheel. It's dying to yourself. It's dying to the life you used to know. And saying, yes, Lord, every day for what he's asked of, out of you. And Jesus said, you shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of. But well, we saw his cup in the garden. He had a job to do, and there was no one that could take his place. Did you know you're born with a place to fill? And if you don't fill your place, you don't rise to fill it, it'll be empty. And when you get to heaven, Jesus will say, if you just would have said, yes, this is what I could have did for me with your life. God talks about wiping tears from that, tears from our eyes. Why? There's sorrow. I don't want this to be my sorrow because I wouldn't say, yes, Lord, and keep dying to myself. Amen. But dying to yourself isn't easy. It's a very hard place. And he said, you will also be baptized with the baptism with all, you will be baptized you will, you will put in what I have, your life. That was Christ's cup, his life. You will put in what I have to receive what I have. He endured for the joy set before him. There's rewards in heaven for what we do here. You know, everybody thinks they pop into heaven and everybody gets the same thing. Everybody gets a pink balloon and a big mansion, <laughs> right? Maybe your, your color's not pink. Maybe you like purple. I want light with my stone with my name on it and a crown. Gotcha, girlfriend. <laughs> I got you. Got, Lord, what, the, Lord, the Lord's got his list. Okay. But, but that's promised to the ones who overcome. Yes. He's got a big call on your life to be a teacher. And so no matter how you're going to scream on, your, on these, this new bicycle he's got you on, you're not, he's not letting go. Okay, that's the truth. So, <clears throat> well, I, it does, it's like, it's not you, honey, anyway, Cindy. It's the death to Cindy so that I can use you, okay? But I can't use, I can't use, I can't use Annie until Annie steps, at, steps aside and says, okay, Lord, I surrender my body. Because in the Bible, it says that I don't even belong to myself. And I'm a temple of the Lord. But, you know, we have a lot, of, a lot of Christians running around, and Christ is supposed to, you know, we're supposed to be the body of Christ, right? We're supposed to have the mind of Christ, but he's got to get rid of us. He's got to get rid of the devil, right? And he's got to get rid of us to operate us in a capacity that we were created to operate in. And we'll be joyful in that place, amen, when we give up us and put on him. They said, take, take, put on Christ. One day I was having a really hard time and I, it, and you know, some days, years back, but you know, every day you, you, you have to, die. something has to die. The alarm goes off. Uh-oh. The alarm goes off. Oh Lord, I, you know, did I say I'd get up at four and pray? <laughs> I didn't really say that, did I? He's like, you know, Annie, I'd like to make you a king but it's going to take your effort. I said, I'm a king of kings. 
and I'm a Lord of Lords that's a boss. There's a lot of business owners perhaps in here tonight. God has called you to start a business. God's really good at business, Christian businesses. He just flies you up, you know. But, um, you know, all these seven mountains that we're looking at, he wants to fill them, the church, the government, the family, education, business, media, arts and entertainment, with Christians. You know, Christian entertainment. We need more filmmakers. We need more authors that write books that, are, that can be birthed into a film. But we have, we're going to have to give up our time and surrender our lives. So it's going to cost us something. There's a price. It's called the price tag. Well, today, as I'm down here speaking, the 12 that gave up their life, the 12th being Paul, not Judas, he traded Jesus for money. So <clears throat> they're around the throne, though. The 24 elders around the throne. Because they loved Christ more than their own life. But they're serving Christ. So now I have a question. Yeah. I, just a question just sure. to throw it out there. I was always confused if the 12 were part of the 24 elders. Because I don't know, mm -hmm. if, does the Bible say who the 24 elders were? I don't think so. Um, as I have studied through the scriptures for years, the 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 revelation that I've received is twelve from the old and twelve from the new. You have the song of Moses, and you have the song of the Lamb. Okay, but there's only one one worthy to open up the scroll. And God spoke to me as I was watching the buildings fall last night in Tokyo, you know, on the news, and I was watching. I mean, high towers falling. He said, "Tell my people." This is a taste. Like if you had, you had a whole uh, swimming pool full of salt, take one little piece of salt out. He said it's nothing compared to, he said, and compared to the tribulation that's coming. And my people need to be ready. My bride, my people, those who call themselves Christians, need to be ready to be taken in the rapture. But many Christians will be left behind because they're not living right. Amen? We're not to fear that. We're to have knowledge and understand that we need to live right in order to leave in the rapture. <laughs> because if you go on to Rialaron, my website, you can study tribulation. And the way, it's like, it's amazing what happens. And we should go through that one sometime. You're preaching. Will be raptured before the tribulation? I do. Yeah, I do too. Because Jesus said this. I mean, it's all the way through the Bible. When you when you take the entire Bible in context and all the pieces, and, and the Bible is a book to be studied, not just read through in a year. <laughs> yeah, but I read it through in a year, and they're smoking and drinking still. There's a problem, right? They didn't let Christ teach him, did they? So, I mean, I was that person. That's why I laugh about it. That's why I talk about it, because I was that girl. <laughs> but uh, Jesus said this. He said, do I believe in domestic violence where a man beats his wife? I said, no. He said, why would I beat my bride? He said, my book is covered. I take my bride and have the wedding feast. And then my father hands me the scroll. And we begin to pop. I, I pop the first seven seals. And you wouldn't believe the hell that happens. And when you see those buildings in Tokyo and Syria crumbling, that was just a taste like one piece of salt. You know how we salt it like, you know, you're in the kitchen making things for your family and your grandchildren. And just one piece of salt compared to all the seas, all the five oceans filled with salt. That's just a taste of 
what's going to happen in the tribulation. So tell my people, tell my people to be ready to meet me. I'm holy, says the Lord. I'm holy God. I'm a sinless God. And I've told my people to be holy as I am holy. And so we confess our sins as we go through the day. Amen. I mean, generally speaking, we're not fighting the bars. But if you are, that's okay. Stay in there and fight it. Amen. Because we're going to win. Whatever, whatever you're in, you're going to win. You don't ever want to throw your life away like Judas did over anything. But we need to understand that God means what he says in the Bible. That without holiness, no one will see the Lord. And so, this is, this is very, very important. Amen. What was your question, honey? Well, yeah, I go into the Bible study, go into Real and Ron and, and, and learn. It's called the end times. And it breaks it down into even the dispensation and the whole thing. But the, the point I'm making tonight is that the rapture comes first and then the tribulation. So, so the thing is, though, there's many Christians that don't understand how to live by faith. They live by sight, meaning when God tells you, go start a business, and you say, God, I don't have any money. He said, did I ask you if you had money? I told you to go to Sam's today, and, you're, well, and he guides our path. He guided the Israelites, okay? What if they said, we're not following you anymore? They've been devoured by the enemies that surrounded them in every nation instead of devouring them with what well, God devoured them under, under the Israelites and with them, didn't he? So <clears throat> we just need to be prepared as a people for this event. We need to live ready to leave, rather by death or rather by rapture. But we need to pursue the things of God in the meantime, like he's not coming for another hundred years, because occupy, and God wants dominion, and he wants you to grow. Because even when you get to heaven, you're going to be growing and learning. Because God is infinite. And he's taken us into all these ages yet to come. In the Bible, in the book of Genesis, it said in the beginning that God made the generations of the heavens. Just let that sink in. That he made the generations. I just heard he made the heavens and the earth, multiple heavens. I didn't know about generations. Yeah, the word in King James, it talks about the generations. And when I saw God, you know, I saw the generations he had made in his face. You know, and that's what I saw. It was like, he's a God of generations. He's a God of ages and ages yet to come, you know, and he's taken man from Adam and Eve and, you know, to the Wright brothers in the airplane and to Ford in the car. And, you know, he, he's a God of witty inventions and he downloads them into the people that he wants to birth them forth. Isn't that neat? So we have a lot to look forward to while we're here, but we always need to live to be ready. If you were in that building in Tokyo to, when it crashed in the middle of the night, they're, they're gone and they're digging people out now. Would you feel like you would have gone to heaven? So we just need to be, we never know. We're not, we're not promised tomorrow. Amen. And it says it will happen in the blink of an eye. Right? That's right. Twinkling. Twinkling. Yes. So, Father, yes. So, Father, we just thank you for this message tonight. We thank you that you're, you're an on-time God and, and your revelation is always with us. Father, I pray for each and every one of them, Father God, that they're sealed, they're whole, they're full of the Holy Spirit. Their names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I thank you that each one of them is an overcomer and will inherit everything on this earth and fulfill their assignment. 
and they will rise into eternity as kings and lords, and they will bring their glory and honor into heaven as you desire, Father, for this is why you created us. And I thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.